guys, Nate Rebel Liners. This channel is all about trying different things, showing you proper ways. We're going to go from this to this. Check out this BMW Companion. So here it is, the BMW Companion with the puck system for a GM. And this is how she arrived. We're going to get her opened up. All right, we're just getting the boxes opened up so we can find the instructions. And look at this bad boy, huh? Whew. She's a beauty. Same thing with the head box. Just getting the instructions out. Making sure everything came good from shipping. All right, so we've gone through the instructions. We'll talk about it as we go. We've got our BMW uh, laying here out on the pallet. And of course, um, things like lifts with heavier sliders like this. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have lifts in here. Make it huge to get this thing in and out. It is liftable uh, by person, but it's obviously a lot easier when you have equipment to, to lift said device. So we're gonna get this lifted up and into the bed of the Chevy. And we'll get this install started. The first thing we're doing is we're moving the pins from the factory uh, that will go in here and, and lock these clothes when the clothes in the puck system. There's usually some adjusting we're gonna have to do into the puck brackets that we'll show you on the OEM for tightening and proper closing of these. So that'll be step one. And then we're gonna get this bad boy hoisted up there with our strap and get it in the truck. Now we're adjusting okay. the factory puck the handles. You can see we're pulling the pin out because they're too sloppy. You can see how loose this is right now. And by pulling that pin out, it's going to allow them to turn the nut tighter. You can see the difference now. And then he'll put the pin back in. And we'll do that on all four. Per the instructions, open and close it multiple times so that it latches without having to beat on it or tap on it. You want to be able to latch it smoothly. All right, factory cotter pin is back in. And he will uh, bend it back over so it cannot come out. That way we know this bolt can't loosen. And it's nice and snug. I'm going to show you now on the front one how loose it is. Do the same thing and adjust that one so it's solid like that. This is the kind of stuff that's handy to have around. Obviously, we're a full service shop and a BMW dealer, and we have this stuff. But uh, from the factory, we did take that one out to tighten the nut up properly, and we did break the cotter pin. So, no big deal. We got them on hand. So as always with BMW, the instruction manual is top notch. Guys, it's got great color photos, just so you know. Uh, everything's right here as you go through it. Gives you each step and what we've done and where we're going to next. Um, we're at the point where it is installed into the OEM puck and the handles have been properly adjusted. We'll then look at our GWR and our weights and our max towing. It's a 20K hitch. Uh, it's plenty big enough for what I'm doing with it. And it'll walk us through all this. And now we're going to start setting up um, the top portion of the head. And we're going to talk about these pivot arms and the different angles that they could be installed in with the proper uh, bolts and the tightening of the bolts um, is what we're about to go over now.
So what we're doing here is a little bit different um, because we had an existing Anderson hitch in there and we're going to show the difference in this Reese Kingpin, which uh, you can click up on the right hand video now if you want to see the airbag fifth airborne uh, Reese hitch Kingpin. That's why we're testing it on this versus the Anderson. We have an Anderson set height that we already liked where the camper pulled. So we're going to try to adjust these arms that get mounted into the base to the closest height we can to where it sat from the floor of the truck. So we're, we're trying to figure that out now. And then we'll show you what you should be doing next and where we're going from there. So in the mount arms, there's six different positions that we could choose from. There's bolts on the inside that I'm gonna show you. And what you'll see is, is these are cut on a different angle, okay? And then I don't know if you can see it in, the, in this video or not, but you can have the head further to the back or if you were to mount the other way, further towards the front of the truck. And that's what we're that's what we're looking at right now so this is the pivot arms that we're installing and we're going to have them towards the back and now we're just figuring out what height adjustment we want them set at so again we'll have them tilted to the rear and he's adjusting that one and now and if you look on the back side there you can see all the different holes and the height difference and they work in conjunction with each other obviously because these are spaced at a certain part so you'll know what holes you're gonna go in. And he's doing this based off our measurement of where the trailer sat compared to the Anderson hitch. And we'll get these torqued up the spec here. All right, we're now gonna to torque all eight bolts, four on each side, at 110 foot-pounds. Torque them in a cross pattern, same as doing your wheels in your vehicle. Double checking them. You don't need a fancy digital torque wrench to do this. Your clicker torque wrench will work just fine, but I like what we got. This came with it. Um, it's a white lithium grease by B&W, and we are going to put it on the bushing. There's our lithium grease. So now we're going to install a leveling kit, what they call it. It's pretty much a spring that sits on the flat side of the kingpin hitch itself so it keeps it level um, this clip is going to get put on we're going to show you that and then the 7 16 a quarter inch bolt 7 16 wrench and we're going to get that put on right now all right we're getting the spring ready the leveling spring and the picture and the instructions is pretty simple it shows a half inch down on the top of that rubber pad of where that spring sits so it'll get bumped down with a rubber mallet. All right, real simple. We're gonna pop this guy on, put together. This is the driver's side, closest to the cab, half inch, half inch from the top of this to the bottom of the rubber. So real simple. He's like the walk when you hit him in. So we're just gonna take a quick measurement just to get an idea of approximately where on this half inch. So our half inch, using the bottom of that rubber, it's gonna be somewhere right about there. And like I said, it's gonna wanna walk when you first hit it. And we'll just get it, we're just gonna get it started. And we got it just started. And then we'll check our measurement again. It's gonna have to come up just a little bit. all the way in it'll also allow me to work it down and that's going to be it right there so now we got our half inch from the top of this spring to the bottom of the rubber 
And that's all we're going to do. Makes it real easy for us here. I'll zoom out real quick. My buddy took a break. So now that we got the bushings lubed, we'll pop the head on. The head only weighs 70 some pounds separated. So it makes it a lot easier to lift it up and put it on. Um, and the base itself weighs 100 and some pounds. So it's a lot easier. It keeps it separated. That way if you want to take the whole thing out, it's not as bad to get it all lifted up. And then we're just going to grab our two handles. And again, they automatically put pressure up. We're going to set that on there. And now that gives us the pitch that we need. We put our pins back in. That simple. And we don't want to forget our pins here in the back side. We know that that can't come off. And we'll take it to the next step. That easy. And that gives it that little bit of a pitch. But when hooking up, it supposedly keeps it a little bit more level. We're going to install the rear arm that controls the bolt latching system. All right, with our 730 seconds Allen, our 916 wrench, our two button bolts with the um, nuts, locking nuts or flat nuts I should say, we will now uh, install the handle that comes here in this bag that controls the um, locking mechanism that holds on to the pin itself on the kingpin. We're going to get that installed now. All right, now we're installing the handle with our Allen buttons, our nuts underneath, and this third hole will be for our safety pin that's down here. And this is the handle that's controlling our locking and unlocking of the physical casing with the double jaw. Tight is tight, too tight is broken. There's no, no torque spec that I find on this. And we'll get this installed up. All right, guys. You saw the install, now we're going to show you the connecting and how the mechanism works. As we know, a traditional slider is 99% built for a short bed truck. This is in a 2018 uh, diesel Chevy Silverado 2500 HD with airbags, and it is um, needed for the slider because of our clearance to the cab. Everybody's truck's going to be different, do your homework. Okay, a couple quick things. Um, as we know this is a short bed we know we got the oem pins are in you watch us set all this stuff it's all set up we'll go through a couple things on this hitch real quick um, the slider is powder coated uh gray silver whatever you want to call it it kind of sticks out from the rest it's really sharp it's got a nice heavy coating on it we already know it's in two parts we know we can pull these pins we can take the head off it's about 78 and then this weighs another 100 something so it does make it easier to get it out as you see i have a, a pulley system or i should say a winch system that can lift it off chain fall, whatever, to make my life easier. Not everybody has that, okay? Um, the double um, or dual jaw, as you can see, they're one inch thick, and we have closed, we have open, closed, open, all right? It also has a pin that goes in there so we know it can't accidentally open, which is in my hand. It's on a chain so you can't lose it. And if you wanna get really fancy, you can buy a lock, and you can put a lock through here so somebody couldn't either use it or disconnect the trailer if it was hooked and being stored somewhere, all right? Um, we back to the jaws. I wanted to mention it's a dual cam, one inch thick action. All right. So when that pin comes in, it gets a good grab on it. We know how this rotates. We know how it comes off. All right. Uh, the next step we have here is our slider. You see this lever I pull back. This pushes with ease. Okay. And that's locked now. Okay. You can see it's locked. And what happens is, is this now gives me that extra turning room when I get into the campgrounds or a real tight spot that I know I'm going to need it, I could slide it back. With my current truck, everybody's different. And the Reese 20K um, Fifth Airborne that I have on there, you can see the video link in my bio and it'll pop up. Um, I leave my tailgate down when I'm always slided to the rear. I know it sounds crazy. At my tightest point of the tailgate touching the camper, I could still walk through there. So at my tightest point, that's how much room. The reason why I dropped the tailgate down is because what I've discovered is, is the back part of my kingpin itself, the box I should say, will hit my tailgate. This has three height adjustments on this head. 
when you saw the install, we did the highest setting. I can't get any higher. Another really important part is to show the shocks on the sides to give you that back and forth also along with the forward. Um, that really makes a big portion of that ride. So, um, you know, I've showed this a lot with the double dual. They are mean. I love it. Love that part. So in my lock position, back, this will give me that extra turning room. In my normal travel position, once I flip that rod and slide it forward, it will relock automatically. It's really as simple as that, folks. All right, guys, we start talking about lube plates. Lube plates are convenient instead of using grease, so when we go touch this thing, we don't get dirt and slime and stuff all over us. Some people would prefer to grease them. Lube plates are really handy. This is a Reese lube plate. It's just a basic 10-inch uh, diameter for 16 to 20K fifth wheels. Uh, I really, really like the BMW one. I got my hands on it. I actually found it on Amazon. I couldn't even get it out of my warehouse. Made by BMW. It's the 10 inch graphite loop plate. I'll post a link to that in my bio. Um, it's got graphite built into the piece itself, so it should help lubricate it. So you've got to have some sort of lubrication. That's what we're using. The next thing we're going to do is set the height on the camper. And we know this is going to want, we're going to want this to push up on the box and it's going to lock into this dual jaw like this. And we'll get this thing hooked up. We'll show you the in-bed camera and how it works. Again, Reese 20K on the pin. The hitch here is rated for 20K, 5,000 pound max capacity um, at the pin. All right, and we know we're under that. So uh, we'll check out the in-bed camera and going down the road, how the airbag system works on the Reese 20K and how smooth this baby makes it. When we get to the campgrounds, we'll turn it on and we'll show you the slide back action or maybe even pulling out of here and show you how well it works and how much it'll give you, uh, how much tighter I'll be able to turn. It's a 44 foot long camper. So uh, stay tuned and check it out. All right, guys, just going to do a real simple backup. Uh, this is obviously a voiceover. Um, I like to get it really close. That way I can then bring the camper kingpin down to the hitch. So you're going to see I'm going to get it right up in there. You can see the gap that's in between there now. Obviously, that is too high, guys. That's where you're not getting to the right part of the pin. So I'm going to lower the camper, okay, until it starts to press down on the flat portion of the BMW companion hitch itself. You can see how it's starting to press it down. Now I'm in that comfortable position where I know when I start to back up, it's going to lift the camera or the camper a little bit. So it's gonna to just to start to lift the camper and then dual jaws are gonna grab a hold of that pin. I'm gonna show you now from the other camera. All right, so I'm getting ready to hook it up and I just wanna show you what this jaw looks like. You wanna make sure that that bottom part of that pin, okay, the bottom part of that pin right there gets into that double jaw. So this should almost lift the camper up as you back in. And we're getting ready to do that right now. You also see that in the in-bed camera. And obviously we wanna make sure that our rear jacks are all up and nothing else is impeding. Uh, why we back into this, including your stairs if they're down, in case it shoves the camper back a little bit further and you don't wanna tear the stairs off your camper if you have dropped down stairs. Or I should say fold down, that fold inside to the stairway. All right guys, when I back up, I hold my electric trailer brake mechanism so the camper doesn't move as I back into it. You can see the dual jaw lock. All right, so you'll see in the impact camera that I backed in, that's what you wanna see, that dual jaw latched around that portion of that kingpin that is perfect that's how it should look and now it's very important to not forget to go pin we've got to get this pin back here so it's real simple there's lots of room for me to crawl in here and i'm just going to grab this pin that's hanging on a chain and i'm going to put it in here You can see it's through that bottom base and I got that pin now in there where it should be so we know our handle is now locked what I'm going to do is unlatch the sliding portion of this and as I pull forward it's gonna give me more room to turn out because I got a heck of a turn to cut here and again I leave my tailgate down and I'll show you that in a second so with the tailgate down that is my clearance that I have Okay, it's an easy 18 inches without it slid. 
so without the slider sliding back yet so you'll see why I leave the tailgate down I would not want to turn with this tailgate down right now until I'm in the slid back position we'll show you that now I pull forward and get it to lock obviously um, I'm taking weight off it I put 75 pounds in my airbags and we're gonna get the pressure off of that then I'm gonna hop in the cab I'm gonna lock the trailer brakes I'm gonna show you on camera I'm gonna pull forward so this locks um, so the hitch locks into the rear in a slider full slide back position okay you're in my truck with me right now what I do to get this to slide back is I'm going to manually lock my trailer brakes as I'm connected and because I lock the trailer brakes okay I just got that the slide and now we're gonna go make sure and confirm that it locked that the slider locked all right you can see we're in a slid back position you can now see how big of a gap uh, it's an easy two and a half feet I measured it okay and I'll show you my tightest point but we're slid all the way back now and now we'll be able to pull this camper out and get it pulled out of here we're looking at that lever right there we know it's locked back it's gonna have more turning radius now and the point of this turning radius and so this at a very tight turn can't hit this rack I'll show you tight I can turn with it like this also All right, so now we're in the in-bed camera. Obviously, the tailgate's down only and full slid back on this hitch. If this if this hitch wasn't slid back and it was still forward, and I forgot the tailgate was down, the tailgate could go into the camper, we'd have a real mess. The tailgate's down for me because that's what works for my truck in full slide back mode. Full slide back mode, if I didn't do this, the Reese back end of that king box could impede into that tailgate, as you'll see in many other videos these guys mess up. Rip the plastic off, worse yet, dent it, scratch it, and pee into it, make a real mess. My son's following me just to give a yell in case he sees something wrong. It's only because it's our first time hooked up to this. He's just a second pair of eyes, and there's nothing wrong with a second pair of eyes at any point in time when you're doing this. So my tailgate's down only when I'm in rear slide back mode. All right, so this is exactly what I want to show. We're in the full slide back position. And I could turn tighter than this yet. I just want you guys to see this, okay? And I want to show you what the potential problems are. So I can clear this. I mean, I'm almost, as far as I could go, I can go further yet, and I will clear this back rack. Where stuff gets dangerous is, is again, on my truck, not saying yours, I can do this with the tailgate down. It makes me nervous, but I've had everybody watch. It does not come close to hitting the camper in slide back position. I would not be able to do this with tailgate down in full forward towing position. I also want to show you where people get themselves into a jam. This is where people get themselves into a jam, especially with a tonneau cover that I'm already losing a couple inches. I have about two and a half inches that I'm clearing this. Um, I'm impressed, okay? Because on the other hitches I've used, I've not been able to do that. Uh, I, would, I would ram it right into the side of it, which I did do once uh, lightly, not too bad. And I can show you the spot. But this is the hitch in the full slide back position, as you can see. And this is how far I'm able to turn. Um, this, is a, this is a whole lot of camper here. And I just want to show you the clearance that I have here and show you the whole camper here, okay? This is a lot of camper here. And we, we've got this turned pretty hefty right now. And we're not hitting the rail on the slide back position. This will definitely make maneuvering at campgrounds a lot easier or tight spots. Um, I'm gonna back out, straighten it up and we're gonna get ready to go on the road. The other thing you gotta watch out for, okay, is you can see how close I am right here. This is tight. That pops and then brakes lock up. You're gonna know in a real hurry. I should look at extending this or figuring out a different way yet, which uh, I've, gotta, I've gotta figure out. So, uh, pretty impressive. Maybe I'll have the son record this as I back up and see if he can show you the clearance on this tailgate. 
as you guys can see, I have massive clearance on this tailgate in full slide back mode. Again, full slide back mode. Tailgate's down, so it doesn't hit the top of it. It barely does hit it, but I'm just playing it safe. It's what works for me and my truck. I will tell you, um, so far, very impressed with this BMW hitch. Nothing wrong with the Anderson. I've had great luck with the Anderson. I've pulled thousands and thousands of miles with the Anderson. And the Anderson is very lightweight to take out of the truck compared to this one. But uh, lots of clearance here. Uh, check this out. And now we'll go with the in-bed video. All right, guys. All the rest of this footage is sped up um, just so I don't bore you and make a two-hour video for no reason. Um, you can see I have lots of clearance in slide back mode. Great for that uh, tight stuff in the campgrounds, getting around my buildings. Absolutely awesome. I'm still in slide back mode. I get to the end of the driveway. The driveway's got a little bit of pitch on it, and I wasn't expecting that because when I went to go do full forward mode, it actually slid at me. Uh, it just startled me. I was fine. I'm far from getting trapped between it, but it's something to keep in mind if you're on some sort of incline or decline. Uh, whether you're putting it lock mode tailgate up because we're now in full forward mode just to make sure that that locked um, I do put it in reverse for a second I hold the trailer brakes like I showed you I back into it and I just make sure that that locked and it's locked and uh, pretty much away we go you're gonna see me pulling out the driveway here and um, usually I have issues there with hitting if I make a right out of the driveway no issues at all the 20k reefs um, king box really makes this too um, it allows that to be raised quite a bit. 75 pounds PSI into that Reese 20K. Uh, we're in regular mode right now. I'm not sped up. The rest of that footage was sped up. Um, really smooth ride. Again, uh, I'm not trying to talk up that Reese 20K, but I'll tell you what, with that airbag built in it, make sure you check that video out. Absolutely insane on how smooth this ride was. And again, that airbag allows that to get raised up further. Otherwise, most hitches would be sitting really low still. Um, this hitch was put in the highest position as you can see in the install video and um, we're back in the speed up mode now it looks like I'm doing a thousand miles an hour and you could just see the movement um, it's it's I'm going over some pretty rough roads the movement is very minimal um, I'm extremely happy with this setup and um, we're pulling to the campgrounds now and uh, we're gonna show you disconnect and speed up mode but um, overall this BMW hitch super impressed with this and with that slide back mode, and I needed it to these campgrounds that I got into, they were super, super tight. Um, we're at the campground. I'm back then. You can still see I'm in slide back mode because I put it in slide back mode when I got to the campgrounds. Same way, you know, I hit the, I, I hold the trailer uh, brake button and you either back into it or pull out of it. Just make sure you pull the lever so it slides. Remember, my tailgate goes down in full slide back mode. All I'm doing is taking some pressure off the hitch. Um, so, in other words, you don't want to just disconnect and pull out. So, I am actually putting pressure off of the hitch right now by raising it. And once I get it raised, um, and I feel like the pressure, you can usually see the gap in between there, just a little bit of gap. Um, I'll then pull my pin here in a second, and we will uh, release these double jaws. Once we release these double jaws, when I pull forward, I will use the same theory or system. Uh, double jaw is released right now. And what will happen is, as you can see, I plug the trailer back in because I forgot. I hold the electric brake in and I pull out of it and it barely even fell down. Uh, guys, please hit subscribe. It really helps me on my channel. Again, I give this BMW companion rating a super, super high double thumbs up. Uh, please hit subscribe and follow us. It helps us out a lot. Until we meet again, Nate out here at Rebel Liners. Talk to you soon, guys.